how to place the serve. Now, for a more advanced player, they don't even think about that anymore. But if you are a more novice player, a newer player to tennis, maybe you just started, you just started working on your serve, and you're happy that it's going over and in, but now you want to start placing it. Well, this is the video for you. I am also going to go over on how to place the ball with this grip, with the frying pan grip. As much as I want to urge you to make that switch, and I'll link that video that I made for specifically that, how do I change from a frying pan grip to the proper continental grip, I urge you to make that switch, but I do realize that tons and tons of players will probably not do that, and they still want to learn how to place the surf. So I'm making that concession today. We're gonna to go over how to place the ball, the serve, with all grips and all serve variations as well. Flat, slice, and kick. Regardless of what spin you hit and what grip you have, the ball will go where the racket face points when you're making contact. And that is one of the reasons why the frying pan grip is so easy, quote unquote, to control because you're literally just tapping the racket face into the direction of where you want to go. But then when you're more advanced and you go into your proper grip, whether then it's the slice serve, a flat serve, or the kicker, it is the tilt of the racket face, the angle with which the racket is positioned towards the service box at contact. It is not the spin that directs the ball. And I'm very glad that I had one viewer who really poked me to make sure that I explained that difference really clearly. So again, it is where the racket face points at contact. So I can hit a slice in any location into the box. It is the angle with which the racket hits the ball at contact. So let's go over the placement. So this is the view that you have normally. So if I'm going with the frying pan grip and I want to go towards the T, that's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna line up, square up, position my racket face, whatever terminology you wanna use, so that at contact point, it hits square on, pointing directly to the T. If I want to go towards the alley, I'm gonna tilt it a little bit more. And from the back, you see that this is very, very little very, very small changes. And they will become even smaller and less visible to the human eye when we're going into the proper grip. But you're going towards the T, you're going with your frying pan grip, fine for now. If I want to go towards the middle of the box, a body serve, you can do that. You just position the racket face, again, pointing toward your target, literally pointing toward your target. If I want to go towards the alley, that's what I'm going to do. So if you look at it from the front, I'm now going towards the T. Racket face is squared up towards the T. If I'm now going to the alley, let's see if we see a difference. I do think so, yeah, but it's not a whole lot. So it's literally, we're talking degrees here, and that stays the same for all grips, for all spins. Same targets, we're walking through T, middle, and then to the ad, or alley to the ad side. I'm squaring up. I'm just throwing, woohoo! So I'm going to T, middle, and alley. Bump, bump, me, eh, not quite. There. But you get the idea. Now let's talk about the serves placement when I do have the continental grip. And again, I urge you to make that change because in one of my next videos, I'm going to show you what placement can be achieved with what grip and why you want to use certain spins to go to certain locations because they're just more efficient and more effective. So let's go with the proper grip. Continental grip. 
the reason why a lot of people have issues when they make the transition and also later when they already have had the Continental Grip for years to get good placement is that you're adding a lot of motion of smaller parts, meaning the forearm and the wrist. Whereas when you're just bumping the ball here, it's basically just your arm moving forward here. When you're now using the right grip, you are having a different motion. You're hitting up. You're actually leading with the edge of the racket, which is, wait, what? How do I now get my racket face to get squared up to wherever I want to go? That is a difficult transition to make for people. So I'm starting with leading the edge, and then depending on where I go, I am turning my thumb up and out. So if I go with flat serves first, because I believe those are easier to learn before the slice, before the kick. Hey, got some videos on those too down in the description. I am now trying to pronate to a completely flat on position. If I want to go towards the T, I am going to a completely flat on position if I want to go wide. But at contact, my racket is slightly tilted. I'm still coming from behind. I'm still making contact flat with the ball. But if I want to go to the T, it points directly to the T. If I want to go wide, I'm hitting a flat serve wide. It's just going to be tilted a little bit more. So from the side, you can probably see that a little better and or you're not going to see it a whole lot because the human eye cannot see things that move that quickly. But if we were to super slow this down, a flat serve down the T looks like this and a flat serve toward the alley on the deuce court side probably looks like this. So we're talking super few degrees here. Very, very little change. The motion is almost identical with the exception of the turn, the pronation of your forearm, the wrist movement. That is the sequence, the consequence of that. And of course, we have our internal shoulder rotation. I can absolutely go wide towards the alley with a flat serve. However, the issue with the flat serve is that the net clearance is lower. So that makes it a higher risk shot. So that's why a lot of times I would suggest that if you hit a flat serve, you go to the T because that goes over the lowest part of the net. Flat serve going down the T. Flat serve going out wide. Just for the sake of the video, I'm not going to hit with any power. I just want to make sure that I have the proper racket head position for me to hit the serve that I want to hit. So both of those serves, I'm coming at the ball flat on. Only that when I'm going to the tee, it has this racket position and a slight change, a slight tilt, a few degrees leaned, tilted, moved, however you want to say it, pointing towards the alley. Now let's go over the slice. And of course, if you have a slice, you will see that after the bounce, it has a slight veer to, for us, the left. For the returner, it's going to move towards his or her right. doesn't matter whether it's a lefty or righty. That's why it's so effective that when somebody is returning on the deuce court and is a lefty to hit a wide slice. And that would be this here. Both times, whether I'm going to the T or to the middle, to the body. I am coming up, leading with the edge. And now in difference to the flat serve, on the flat serve, I made contact full on. On both T and to the alley, my racket is tilted a little bit more. And going to the alley, maybe an additional one or two degrees. I don't know the number of degrees. You have to experiment a little bit, but it's certainly not this. Again, on slow serves, you can probably get away with that, but 
higher levels, they will see that you're telegraphing it. So it's the same toss, it's just the tilt of the racket face. So we know the mechanics or the idea of how to place the frying pan grip, which is basically in essence a flat serve. The regular flat serve with the proper grip, the slice serve, and now let's go over the placement of the kick serve. So again, the toss, the motion with which I'm brushing up is the exact same thing, whether I want to go towards the tee or now the alley on the outside. It's just the degree with which my racket is more open or more closed. So you also notice that I'm trying to use different terminology because I've had some uh, viewers say like, what do you mean by tilt? What do you mean by setting the racket? What do you mean by positioning the racket? So I'm trying to give you different options so that it resonates, hopefully, for everyone. So let's see a kick out wide. Horribly off, but you saw that little kick. You saw that little bounce to the right after the bounce. So kick serve executed, just missed the target. And that happens. So how do you now put that new knowledge maybe or different wording, different uh, terminology into practice. As usual, start slow, go from more simple to faster and more complex. Start in no woman's land, right here, because that makes it a lot easier to get the ball over the net with an abbreviated grip. So whether it's then working on your flat serve, placement on your slice or even on this serve. It's a lot easier to see the result and you just have less things to worry about than when you're doing the full motion. And of course then when you have more successful repetitions, move back and then also gradually move to a full grip and then eventually you're going with the full motion. So go ahead and experiment. Let me know down in the comments how your journey with the placement of the serve is going.